Hey guys, Matt here. Uh, just going to do a quick video tonight. Uh, things keep popping up on my radar screen and I want to address them on, on uh, some things I see on YouTube. And, and uh, I, it's going to probably kick over a couple of sacred cows and I'm not doing it for shock value or, or to be uh, puffy or self-righteous. It's, it's done in love. I certainly don't think I'm any better Christian than anybody else at all. I'm just a, a, a total baby little preacher who's saved by grace, and I know it. I'm, I'm nothing, and Jesus is everything. But uh, I want to talk about uh, the grace of God and, 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 and false teaching and, and how false teachers like to drag people under the law. And I thought I was done with this, but I saw a video today, and I just, it just I have to address it. And I, I ordinarily don't do videos like this. I just like to read and preach, but this ties in to 1 Timothy 4 so well, and I, I want to address it. And there's a couple of things. Um, false teachers, ever since the church has been birthed, ever since the church was birthed, I should say, false teachers, which are from Satan, uh, there's no such thing as doctrines of men, they're doctrines of demons, false teachers try to drag people back under the law. And that's, that's the oldest trick in the book. You can read Galatians. You can read Hebrews. Uh, it's what's happening and what what's what what was happening rather in Ephesus, um, in First Timothy, and uh, and it's interesting because every time I do a video, stating just the the real black and white, plain, basic, real basic, new covenant theology that we are no longer under the law. We are under grace, and by the way, grace. What is grace? Grace is an unmerited free gift from Jesus Christ that we get when we get born again. When He works the miracle in our life to draw us in, to convict us of, the, of sin, righteousness, and judgment, like, the, like it says in John 16, 8. The Father draws us to the Son. The Holy Spirit convicts us. And, and we, we have this miracle happen. We get born again. And when we do, we find that in Colossians 1, 24-29, Christ, this mystery, this mystery of the faith is, is, is revealed, and that's Christ in us. So Ephesians 1.13 says we're sealed with the Holy Spirit and we have Christ in us. And both, as it says in, in Romans 8.24 and 8.30, 8.26 and 8.34, both of them are interceding for us. This beautiful miracle happens. And it's all by the grace of God, not by the law. And to some people, this is real basic, but every time I do a video on this, I get private messages and comments from people saying things like, "What are, are should I just go commit adultery then since we're not under the law? And two days ago somebody made a, a cut and paste about ten verses on the law. And, uh, and they were great verses. I love them. It's God's word. But we're not saved by the law. It's, it was almost as if to say, well, see, it's Jesus plus the law. And it's not. And uh, I think this ties in to a phenomenon, a phenomenon that I found on Facebook, or on YouTube, rather. Sorry, uh, it's late, I'm tired. But there's, there's this phenomenon I, I've seen on, on uh, YouTube, and that is there's a group of people, and I've only been on YouTube since January, so this is new to me, but there's a group of people who, when they get born again, or if they're born again, or, or I don't know where they're at, but... They, they pretend to be Jewish. They, they go back like, like Jesus wants them to be Jewish. You know, they speak Hebraic. They call them Elohim and, and Yeshua and Yahweh. And, and it's really perplexing to me. And, and there's nothing wrong with it per se, although I think it's a little weird. I think it's a little weird for unbelievers. I think it's a bad witness. And I think it's confusing for weaker and, 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 and newer Christians. But the real thing, the real danger in this is, is that there seems to be confusion among a lot of these people with, with grace, with just the simple fact that we have this unmerited free gift of grace. And you see it when the people in, in this camp, they write G hyphen D, right? As if we can't write his name. He died for our sins and we can now boldly approach the throne of grace, Hebrews 14, or 4.16. But we, we can't write his name on a piece of paper. That's, that's really strange. Um, and, and sometimes people dress like Jews, like Jews in the first century, right? 
they, they, they strive to keep the law and to keep the Sabbath. And it's really odd because the law was never meant to save us. The law couldn't save us. The law was a schoolmaster to drive us to Christ. And when, when, and when Christ gave us faith in him, we were no longer in need of a tutor. That's what it says in Galatians, I think it's 3.24 if I'm not mistaken. Um, in fact, in Hebrews, when you look at in the tabernacle, in Hebrews 9, when, you, when, you, when they go back and look at the tabernacle and the high priest would go into the most holy place, what was in that Ark of the Covenant? Three things. What were they? The law, the Ten Commandments, Aaron's staff that budded, showing Israel's rebelliousness, and, and manna showing Israel's distrust for God. So what do those three things show? They show that Israel was a rebellious nation, just like we all are apart from Christ. They show that they couldn't keep the Ten Commandments, so they were put in the ark, covered by the mercy seat, which was sprinkled by the blood, eventually to be sprinkled by the blood of Jesus Christ. Right? The law was never supposed to save us. We are not under the law. And I think people really get in the ditch with this whole pretend you're Jewish thing. And I think, I think we as human beings have what's called a debt ethic. And I think that is that we try to pay Jesus Christ back once we get born again. And whether we know it or not, this is offensive to Jesus Christ because it's a free gift. It's an unmerited gift. It doesn't have any conditions on it. It's free. All we have to do is believe in Him, repent from our sins, and worship Him as Lord and Savior. That's it. It's beautiful. It's almost too simple for some people, right? But I, I just get disturbed when I see this because I, I, think, I think maybe some people think that they need to go back and keep the Sabbath and keep the law. And, and maybe Jesus Christ is going to love them more if they call Him Elohim or, or, or Yeshua. And if you, if, you, if you live in Philadelphia or you live in Wisconsin, I think it's weird that you would call him Elohim or Yeshua. I think it's weird that you would write G hyphen D. You can call him Jesus. It's not about an outward thing anymore. It's not about the outside of the cup. It's about the inside. It's about our hearts. It's a heart thing. We don't have to pretend to be Jewish. In fact, it's a little strange. We can love him and he loves us. And we can enter his rest. We don't have to keep the Sabbath. We're not under the Sabbath. The Jews used to have to keep the Sabbath. I know this will make people mad. The Jews used to have to keep the Sabbath on Saturday. Right? When's the Sabbath now? The Sabbath is Tuesday. And the Sabbath is Wednesday. And the Sabbath is Thursday. And the Sabbath is Friday. The Sabbath is every single day. Read Hebrews 4. We, we enter God's rest every single day. We get to. We don't have to. We get to. It's beautiful. Every day is the Sabbath rest for us. Every single day. Therefore, if you, hear my, if you hear my voice today, do not harden your hearts as you did in the rebellion. Enter my rest, he says. Read Hebrews 3 and 4. What does Jesus say? He says, man wasn't made for the Sabbath. The Sabbath was made for man. Okay? Um, I saw a video today by Jan Bischoff. I've seen some videos by him and they seem really good and then I've seen some other ones that are really disturbing. And this video today was about sinless perfection. It's just more law. It, we've seen it with the King James only controversy. It's just more law. And here's the deal. We're not saved by Jesus plus sinless perfection. There was only one person who ever walked on the history of this planet who was sinless and his name is Jesus Christ. We will never be sinless. We are saved from the penalty of sin. Yes, it's called justification. We are being saved from the very power of sin. It's called sanctification. And, and someday, when we meet Him, we will be saved from the very presence of sin. It's called glorification. But it will not happen until we meet Jesus Christ, till we are in heaven, till we're home. Until then, we will still sin. We, we will sin less and less, and the sin that remains in us will bother us more and more but we will still sin in thought, word, and deed. We will not practice sin. Galatians 5, 19-21 tells us that those who practice sin will not inherit the kingdom of God. In 1 John, it tells us that those who commit to sin are of the devil. But it also says those who claim to have no sin are liars and the truth is not in them. Okay? So, it's not about Jesus plus keeping the law. It's not about Jesus plus keeping the Sabbath. It's not about Jesus 
plus baptism. It's not about Jesus plus reading the King James only. It's not about Jesus plus pretending to be Jewish. It's not about Jesus plus writing G hyphen D. It's not about Jesus plus sinless perfection because it doesn't exist. We are saved by faith in Jesus Christ. We are saved by grace through faith in Christ, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Ephesians 2, 8, 9. Notice how Paul writes Ephesians 2, 8, 9, inspired by the Holy Spirit, that we are saved by grace through faith in Christ. And then, and then comes Ephesians 10, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works that we should, that he prepared in advance that we should walk in them. Do you notice that salvation always comes first and then and then the works? Do you notice that every time Paul greets the church, he says, grace and peace to you. Grace is the, is the, is the engine. Peace is the caboose. It's, it, peace is never before grace. Why is that? Because there is no peace without grace. It's grace and then peace. Grace and peace to you. It's God's grace upon you. We are not saved by the law. We are saved by grace. There is nothing we can do to add to the finished work of Jesus Christ. And this is what's, what was going on in Galatians. This is what was going on in Ephesus and 1 Timothy. This is what was going on in Hebrews. And it's the oldest trick in the book. Satan tries to drag people back under the law. It's from Satan. We don't have to pretend to be anybody we're not. We are free in Christ. There is no longer Jew nor Greek. We are all one in Christ. Okay? So I, I just think we need to be careful. I think it's a really bad witness to people. I think it's dangerous for young Christians. I think it's dangerous for weaker Christians. And I think it's weird for people that aren't in Christ who might be being drawn in. I think it's a bad witness to them to see people from Wisconsin get born again and all of a sudden speaking Hebrew and, and dressing like a Jew. It's strange. And I think we should stop it. I think we should be careful not to try to add anything to the finished work of Jesus Christ. It's offensive to Christ and there's nothing we can do to pay Him back. All we can do now is walk in the grace of Christ and worship Him in spirit and truth. Alright, peace.